Hello, it's your favorite nurse, uh, Nurse Amy, back on your screen. And um, I'm actually going to title this video, Don't Add Your Own Soundtrack. I was laughing before I came on because that's something I always tell my students. Don't add your own soundtrack. Don't add your own soundtrack. And um, I know the struggle. I know how difficult it is when you're doing your skill. Again, you're in that mindset of, wait, hold on. This is not how it's done where I work, or this is not how it should be done. Because again, I'm just passing, um, giving this person infection, or I'm not clean enough, or, you know, it's not safe enough. That is you adding your own soundtrack. And you know what? The reason why I said it's quite a struggle is when you've been through, oof, the training of nursing, and a lot of nurses would tell you, and I'm sure medical doctors too, there is a way to think. And you need to understand the first thing, and I have said this in this channel, you've got to separate book world from work world. They're two different things. There's a way to pass and there's a way to get the job done. Okay. So my job and what I have done with my students and on this channel is to separate those two worlds. Now, there are times when I will talk about the real world and we can go on and on and all the things that happen, but you need to understand when it's the book world, it's a perfect world. Everybody's happy. There's no bullying. Everybody wants to take on somebody else's job and it's all la di da you know, which is not true about the work world. However, that is added soundtrack. So say, for instance, and I have gotten people asking me this. So you find a lot of times when I come on here, sometimes I'm answering questions because these questions keep coming. They're repeated questions. And I just want to hit the nail on the head in this in, in, in a video. So I've been asked, OK, so Nurse Amy, um, when when I'm testing, um, where should I stand or where should I pull the curtains or where should I do this? Where should I put that? And what if there's someone on the other side? When you are testing, you need to be very cognizant of the fact that the, a lot of the things that happen in the work world is not a part of what is is or should be in the book world it's just different remember you're being tested you're being timed so time is of the essence you've got to pace yourself so you cannot be thinking well there's there are other people in the ward or the people in the in the unit or the people in the room i've got to protect i've got to, you know when you add too many layers then you get into your own head and then you begin to stumble and you begin to make mistakes so let me give you some some definite examples when you go into the room i teach my skills um i love for my students to get extra points and that's what i call it you don't have to do it when you go in i still teach with you providing privacy. Now you can have students, not students, sorry. You can have patients, you can come into a room and it's just a one bed. Go ahead and, and it's okay to speak. I teach my students to speak to the situation. I am providing privacy, you're pulling the curtain. Now you need to understand some skills don't call for that. But then I'm I'm telling my, my students, go for the extra point, it doesn't, what? half a second, pulling privacy code and introducing myself. Hi, my name is Amy. I'm your nursing aide here today and I'm here to provide X, Y, Z. And as you're doing that, you are again certain things that I know is going to be pleasing for the test observer to, um, you know, just get them rooting for you. OK, so as you're doing that again, like it doesn't cost you, it doesn't it, half a second, a second or two. Right. You're, you're, you're again, practice. You know, I've told you guys, you have to keep practicing. That's the one way you can up your speed. You have got to practice. If you're not practicing, well, then again, it's more challenging and more, you know, you have, you get very anxious on that day. So pulling the curtain, you need to understand. I've had people write to me to like, um, if I'm pulling the curtain, um, what side should I stand up? First and foremost, the first thing you need to do, what state are you testing in? You need to have the candidate handbook. The, my videos on this channel, a lot of the videos were pre-COVID. So don't come here 
look at the videos some of the things that are in these videos were pre-covid some things have been changed however the basic skills remain the same you're still going to wash your hands when i did a lot of these videos in the state that i taught in in the state of ohio and i'm sure most states outside of ohio you indicated washing your hands by doing this you know the clapping of hand or just saying it post covid in the state that i teach in you actually for some skills you have to go actually wash your hands again back in the day before covid it, it was that you did everybody and i know this was national everybody washed their hands you indicated that you washed your hands by really washing your hands the, the, that number one skill everybody did it and then you went on to do four other skills and then when you do this, you're indicating or remind again, again, telling your test observer because you passed that hand washing. So it's OK when you still you just indicate it because you passed it. It used to be that if you failed the first hand washing, the real hand washing, the only hand washing, you couldn't go on to do the four other skills. Does that make sense? So when you go to do your skill. Please have your candidate handbook, your state CNA candidate handbook. That gives you guidelines on how to do those skills. So having said that, the video's here and it's helping a lot of people. The basic skills remain the same. You're still going to raise the bed to a working position for you. You'll see, you're still going to squat. Like I tell you guys, don't bend from your waist. They watch those things. You will still raise side rails up because safety is important. Now, I find, and in some of these candidate handbook, the guidelines are not very comprehensive. And that's where the extra points come in. I tell my students, go for the extra. Even if they're not saying raise the bed. It's, it's a good thing when you're by the bed. It's safety. Raise the bed to a working condition. Again, you're going to brush their teeth. How, instead of laying them flat, have them, the head of the bed, up a little bit. These are tidbits that I teach people. How, however, what I'm saying now is don't overthink the situation. Don't go in and say, and I've had people make some comments, oh, you didn't take your gloves off. First of all, in the skill, it doesn't have you taking the gloves off. You can if you think you have the time. Remember, you're being timed. So if you want to carry the weight of the world, the outside world, and you bring it to your testing, you're not going to finish your skills. And if you didn't finish, you didn't pass. Does that make sense? And that's why I teach my students, speak to the situation. You know, when you, the rule of thumb actually is, when, for those who, people who are nitpicking, when you leave the presence of the patient, you should actually discard the gloves and put new gloves on. You shouldn't be, you know, go out of the presence of the patients and come and still be wearing old gloves. Do you want to be doing that? Again, remember, you're being timed. What I tell my students is changing, changed my gloves, back with new gloves, back with clean gloves. Again, you can talk. If you're not talking, if you don't want to, it's fine. I just teach people to pass, okay? And it has been working. Having said this, there are two books that really has helped a lot of students, even those that are not my students to pass. I will leave the link down, but it's in a lot of my videos. It's on Amazon and I gave seven tips on the skills themselves and your mindset going into the testing facility. What the kind of mindset you should have that should be able to combat anxiety that should be able to combat you know um attitude is very important you've got to be in the right attitude again these things have worked is not broken why fix it right so if you have questions leave your comments down below or as usual dm me or uh, text me a lot of you, I think, have my numbers, but even if you don't, you can email me. My 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 um, Instagram, Nurse Amy Academy is right there. You can you can reach me, and for anyone's reaching to me, knows I always answer. I private 
um, I'm a private tutor. I do mentor students. I do private tutoring. And it's not just here on YouTube. I try as much as possible to help, you know, those that I can help because I want to be invested in your journey, your success journey. Okay. So um, I hope I was able to clarify some things here. Don't overthink. Don't add your own soundtrack. If some people would say, well, I should, um, I should change the sheets. I'm trying to remember some of the very, um, oh my God, I can't remember everything right now. But even in the classroom, I've had people do this like, oh, the sheets, why, why are you helping raise them? Taking, when you raise their head up, why don't you have your gloves on? Because they could have pooped in bed. That's adding your own soundtrack. Does it say in the book that they, they're soiled? It means you have to differentiate book world from work world. I have done videos on book world and work world um, on this channel. Check them out, okay? There is a difference. First of all, you shouldn't be wearing gloves when you're taking care of patients. Unless it's indicated, okay? <laughs> so, um, I'm sure I'm going to be doing a part two of this. All right, but... Um, I'll see you in my next video, okay? Y'all take care.